given this film and its uh, themes of uh, kids having to uh, stand up to people that are constantly telling them what to That's do. That's interesting. Do you feel like you're drawn to, to characters who are rebellious? Are you a rebel? Is there a Can you theme tell here? from my collared shirt what a rebel I am? I, I think um, I, I never made that connection until right right now, so I guess oh, okay. the answer is yes, okay. that I am drawn to that. Um, you know, uh, I think with with this story is also drawn to that friendship between the boys and um, the way they explore making music is very much the way I was in high school making films, that sharing um, in cr creating something mm -hmm. with, with somebody else, something that was really important to me and it was an easy way for me to kind of get a bunch of people together to socialize and work out stuff that was going on with, my, with me. So of all the things you could have done for your first feature, is that what drew you to this story? I think it was. I think I was really interested. I, the, this is based on a novel by Peter Bagnani, and um, reading the novel was an introduction to Buckminster Fuller for me. Uh, I knew about geodesic domes. I knew what they what they were, but I didn't know about this incredible man. And part of the, the draw of the novel was reading about this guy that almost seemed like he could be a fictional character. Um, and... Uh, but I think the the heart of it, the emotion of it, the thing that that really attracted me to it was the story of these these kids and and Meredith, the sister included. I think because the age that I really got into movies, one of the films that I saw at that age was Breaking Away, the Peter Yates movie, and it just ha it has a really authentic depiction of of male friendship and mm -hmm. um, and also a story of class that I thought was interesting, which this film doesn't really delve into, but um, but I wanted to try to have those kind of, of performances in, in a film like this and portray friendship in a way that was funny at times, was um, maybe a bit sad at times, was, was always honest. You did not know that Ellen Burstyn and Bucky were friends. No. So before that realization happened, um, what made her your perfect Josephine? I think she has a, in all of her performance, has a... Or use a kind of a lame way to describe, but like an earthiness and honesty about her mm -hmm. that Josephine had to have, and an unpredictability about her. But she's someone that immediately, when when, when she popped in my mind as um, Josephine, it was just a good fit. And I can't, I don't know that I could articulate it other than other than that. That just felt felt right, and mm -hmm. and and it didn't hurt that she's one of my favorite actresses, and she's amazing. And we sent the script to her. Um, and about two weeks after that, I got an email from my agent saying, did you know that Ellen knew Buckminster Fuller? And, uh, I said, I didn't, I did not know that. I did not know and, that. And, um, and he said, well, next time you're in New York, maybe we could set up a meeting. And I just said, no, I'd like to go like now. And <laughs> so I I'm open two weeks later, we, we worked out the schedule and I went and met her at her, at her apartment. And, um, she told me the story of how she met him and um, she was shooting The Exorcist and she went to hear him speak and was really mm -hmm. taken with, with him and then um, met him a few months after that in one-on-one -on -one, and then the, the friendship sparked from there. But she then showed me the footage that you see you see in the film, which hadn't been ever seen before. She just shot it and put it away and put it on a shelf. And uh, it was kind of the, the one of these things where she... I went in still, and I'm like, is Ellen Burson really going to do my, my little movie? And, and But at the end, it was like, she was just like, how could I not? But one thing that came out of um, the scene where she slaps Asa in the face that I wasn't expecting was just how, m I, I knew she was going to slap him because I'd written, she, she slaps. She was slaps Asa him. expecting it? He was. We talked about it before. <laughs> he knew he was going to get clocked. Okay. Um, but the thing I wasn't expecting was how, she was really affected by it more than him that mm. that um and she f she immediately felt like she needs to apologize mm. for that and that was something that wasn't written in the script that she she added and i remember being like oh, all right well maybe we could try it i guess and <laughs> we did it and of course it's in the edit and she was Good. absolutely right to suggest that yeah the music's a character how did your uh, actors feel about punk well so i i think it's cool that you said that it's 
it's a character because it's how I thought about about it because we started with we knew the punk songs had to be stuff that Jared would would be listening to that would be like on his mm-hmm. shelf or on his phone or wherever you listen yeah. to music um, but then the score came out of um, asking well what would set what would Sebastian's soundtrack be and mm-hmm. during research uh, for the film I'd been watching a lot of Buckminster Fuller documentaries, and a lot of them were made in the the seventies and the eighties, and they have this sort of synthy retro futurist kind of soundtrack. And so the score is very much inspired by those documentaries, and um, and uh, we really liked the the counterpoint that offered to to the punk. Um, uh, but as far as the kids playing music, um, Alex is a really accomplished musician, mm. and he um, he was in a band with his brother and. He sent me an incredible audition tape covering uh, a song, and I knew when I saw that that he was the guy. Um, but Isa did not play the bass. Uh, he he really doesn't have much music uh, background, um, and we had hired a teacher to teach him the bass, but immediately uh, Alex offered to do that instead. And uh, we, we took him up on that, and... It, it just bonded them in a way that yeah. I think really helped the movie. And we rescheduled the shoot so that all the all the scenes that you see in the movie when he's in the base and he, in, in the woods and he's plucking the bass, that was like the first day of shooting. And he just got the, the bass guitar and started learning. And at the end where they play in the dome, they had been practicing together for a few weeks at that point and actually played a show at a bar. So uh, it was fun to chart and parallel what was going on in, the, in their real life with – what we shot in the movie, and a lot of the the scenes where they're, especially this the first scene where they're practicing in his room for the for the very first time, um, well, much of that was improvised, led by Alex just saying, "This is how I would teach him. This is how great. I'm teaching him." It had really good energy. Oh, good. Thanks. Did you uh, did you write the lyrics for "Stupid School" and um, what was the other song? N- Going mad. No, did "Stupid that? School." Th- that's pretty much as as it was in the novel. We okay. um, we made some tweaks to it. I think just, a, but nothing uh-huh. significant. And then uh, the music was done by this guy, um, uh, Mac McCona, who's uh, in this band, Super Chunk. And um, he did an amazing job creating some sort of um, um, tracks that the boys had for inspiration. And then they sort of did their, their take on it. Um, and that's sort of how we created the sound mm-hmm. for the band. How much archival footage did you plow through to find that nugget? Well, um, the the quotes. So um, the 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 footage itself was different than the audio. Finding that ah. some of the, some of the words uh, written are are written and were never actually recorded. So we had somebody a couple of the quotes to somebody who could do a great Buckminster Fuller impersonation oh, okay. record it for us well um, and. Uh, but that that sort of idea was something that initially with the script, I had actually originally thought that we would cast uh, someone to play Buckminster Fuller, mm. and he would actually sort of appear in Sebastian's mind, mind's eye, maybe like driving his Dymaxian car or standing in front of a dome and, and speak to Sebastian. Mm-hmm. Um, and And once we started kind of digging into the film and seeing what it was becoming and also seeing how valuable the footage of Ellen and Bucky was and how important it was to kind of stay true to that reality. It felt like a different movie to do, mm-hmm. to do that. So we, we ended up um, leaning on the ar- archival more and I'm really, I'm really happy we, we did. I, I yeah. liked it. Well, it's a wonderful film, and we can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you very much. So please help me thank Peter Lavolsi.